launch the introduction? Sure. Well, I'll go ahead and take it from here. Uh, we'll go ahead and jump into it. Um, um, more afternoon, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Um, my name is Joshua Tice. I, I feel like I know pretty much all of y'all. Um, for those that I don't, it is thank you all for being here. Um, uh, I represent uh, BCI, which we're based here in Houston, which were fine wines and spirits. Um, and today we're going to highlight one of our uh, partners, uh, Boomsma Distillery in Friesland, Holland, or uh, the Netherlands. Uh, Chanton Boomsma is the proprietor uh, and the uh, owner, so no better man to talk to uh, and get an idea of what Genevieve is and where it came from, and also to what his distillery um, is doing to contribute to it overall. And also to everybody seeing the distillery like whiskey and gin and Genevieve is the one thing I don't think a lot of people have had an opportunity to see. So uh, I think this is going to be a really awesome ability. Um, thank you to Tomas for USBG for uh, helping me put this together and reaching out to all of y'all as well. And then uh, those of y'all who were at Harold's last night and got your dinner plates, I hope you all enjoyed those. I got to see one and uh, I have to say look pretty fantastic. So um, I will let my boss, uh, the owner and uh, of uh, BCI, Jean-Francois Bonti, uh, take over and do a proper introduction of Chantoine for y'all today. So thank you. Uh, thank Joshua. I'm going to be very quick. So Natalie and I are uh, very happy to uh, be with you today. Thank you, Joshua, and to the team of USBG uh, Houston. Um, this is, uh, you know, special to us because, you know, we've been a Houstonian for a while and the BCI uh, is uh, a Houston-based uh, U.S. importer. There are not that many uh, Houston-based importers, so Houston is home for us. And uh, that's where also we raise uh, our family. So thank you so much for taking the time. Uh, those are very special time for our industry. Uh, we hope you and your loved ones are safe. And uh, again, we uh, really appreciate the time you are taking to join us uh, today uh, with Chantoine. Chantoine is a fifth generation uh, proprietor of Boomsma Distillery. Uh, they started in 1883. Uh, they are, uh, in addition of being wonderful artisanal distillers, uh, wonderful family as well. Uh, we have the pleasure to import and represent them in the United States. So Chantoine, thank you so much for taking some time to be with us. And uh, Chantoine is live from Le Warden. Yeah. Uh, and, Hi everybody. Uh... Sorry sure Chantoine? You. Exactly. Uh, actually, I'm just saying hi and well, just uh, if you're giving all those big credits to us, you know, it makes us a... <laughs> so, um, welcome everybody. So, what, what, how we are going to proceed, just in a few things. Uh, Chantoine is going to uh, go in his office now so he can guide us, uh, you know, uh, through the uh, presentation about Geneva, the history of Dutch Geneva, uh, and, uh, and take us through the testing, I think. Joshua and your team at USBG prepared some samples uh, of the different products. You have the Boomsma Younger as number one, then we have Boomsma Oude as number two, Boomsma Cluster Bitter as number three, and then Boomsma Beer and Burger as number four. Um, and then when we have done that, then Antoine, uh, Chantoine will take us through a live tour of the distillery. We will go with him through the entire distillery. And, uh, and this way you can see where everything is done uh, once we have been through the first part of the presentation. So uh, thank you again. Any question you have, please uh, put them in the chat. Uh, when the presentation is over, we will be happy to go through every question you have and this way answer any question you have as well. So again, thank you so much for being with us. Chantoine, it's, up, it's you live in Le Warden. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much for the kind introduction. And uh, thank you all very much for, for joining us. Um, this is our, our, my first webinar. So um, I hope everybody can hear me and um, I'm holding, I'm logged in twice. So I have one with my phone, uh, which is this one, and one uh, where I'm sitting. So uh, I hope everybody understands. So uh, we'll start with a booth for distillery. We have a, a small film. And uh, just to give you a short impression of uh, who we are and what we do, and no it's better. The Bosma family comes from Europe. Here, son. It's, it's a wonderful brand, a Frisian family business 
with an illustrious history. Yeah, we're all good. We're all good, Chantoine. Uh, you just need to play, uh, keep playing. Okay, sorry. Bonsma is mainly known for famous Outfrisse Beerenberger. In the rest of Europe, they are well known for brands such as Geneva, Glendelloch Whiskey, Esbjerg Vodka, Old Captain Rum, and Clark comes to close the bitter. We need the play again, Chantoine. Sorry. <laughs> Enterprising, strong-willed and passionate, and of course, sticking their nose in everything. Incidentally, that's not a bad characteristic if you produce drinks. Actually, right from the beginning, way back in 1883, when Dirk Bonsma started in the Frisian capital of Leeuwarden at the Oldenhoven. Firstly, with groceries, drinks, and distilled drinks such as Out Friese Beerberg. The son, Edogus Boomsma, soon provided the rest of the Netherlands with Dutch Geneva in 1903. After the Second World War, his son, Anton Richard Boomsma, added wine and elderberry Geneva to the assortment. The export to Germany and Belgium was gradually started. In 1980, the fourth generation, Edogus Boomsma put the company firmly on the international map with their Glentella and Scotch whisky and the Esbjerg Vodka. Furthermore, Boomsma also became well known for the import and sales of more than 300 wines of superior quality. Fifth generation Boomsma siblings, Chantoine and Saskia Boomsma, are still focused on their passion. Apart from tasting, improving and further international expansion, they are quietly producing ever better products step by step with their new high-tech copper post. Producing spirits will always remain a craft. You can automate production, but ultimately, it's all about experience. That is something you cannot get from a book. And if you now look at it all from a distance, I think that very few people know about everything that has been added since that hour, Friese Bierber. How do I know all this? A father is always proud of his children. So. so that's just a, a very short introduction film of uh, Boomsma Distillery. And as my father told you, uh, Boomsma Distillery is founded in 1883 by my great great grandfather Dirk Boomsma at the Oldehove and Oldehove is the, the church you see here. It's like the Tower of Pisa we have in Leeuwarden. It's leaning over. Uh, it's the tower, well, it's like the Pisa Tower of uh, the North. And um, we are still a 100% family-owned company. Um, today, Saskia, my sister, and I, we lead the company. We're the fifth generation. And uh, we're a leading producer of Dutch spirits, like, Geneva's and herbal bitters, like also we're going to taste later on. And also uh, we're an importer and also producer of uh, international spirits, but also a very big importer of whiskey and a producer of vodka. At this moment, we employ 45 people and we have around an annual turnover of 15 million euros. Chantoine, uh, since you have your phone with you before you take her through the district, you want to reverse it? So we can also see you uh, at the same time as we look at the screen. So we can have you on one screen and the presentation on the other one. Okay, uh, Okay. yeah, one moment. Thank you. There you go. Awesome, thanks. Okay, sorry, I thought I was on both screens. Um, so, um, so, um, so, so, uh, so 100% family owned. Then where we are, we explained already a little bit. Uh, we're uh, situated in Friesland, which is the most northern part of the Netherlands. And uh, we have our own flag, which you can see on there. And we also have our own language. So, uh, we f that's a very important difference between the rest of us and the Dutch. 
Well, a little bit of a history uh, Geneva and uh, the history of Geneva is always it's always very difficult to um, talk because not everybody is agrees on the exact history of Geneva and Juniper Berry but I always have the feeling uh, that it must have come from um, well the medicinal values from Juniper Berries so and that goes way way back royal already with the, the ancient Greeks so and uh, it really during the 13th century when there was this play uh, the pest we saw uh, a lot of that uh, well, used and um, then in the 15th century we used more or less the juniper berry to make our distillates more tasty because it, juniper berry is very very tasty our distillation methods were not very very good so it wasn't always very good so uh, this helped make it more tasty and obviously uh, being dutch being a sailing nation uh, the voc we took uh, our geneva everywhere so and then uh, this was actually a flourishing industry and uh, every well, every sizable town in the Netherlands had its own Geneva distillery, uh, but Schiedam, which is more to the south, uh, was really the hub of Geneva and still is, so calls themselves. Um, then, um, how it also became famous is with uh, the English, because that's also a very important, uh, important part of uh, Geneva is that we fought the French uh, together with uh, the English and to give them a little bit of courage we gave them two shots of Geneva just before they got into war and battle and so they called it Dutch courage and, uh, and they to steady their nerves and then uh, when at the arrival of well, William the Dutch uh, of Orange on the throne of England uh, he introduced also Geneva, well, uh, to uh, really to the English, and they started making gin out of it. And um, so that's in very, very short, a little bit uh, the history of, uh, of Geneva. Um, important for Geneva is that we are an IGP, so we're protected like the wines, like an AOC in France. Uh, we have an IGP on Geneva. And um, so we have a couple of simple rules. I think IGP is very light. Um, first uh, is a young Geneva, how we pronounce it. So that's uh, our young uh, Geneva. And uh, it can only be produced in the Netherlands, the Belgium and northern part of France. Uh, it's produced from neutral grain alcohol with a minimum of 1.5% of malt spirits, which is very, very low. And uh, aromatized with juniper berry and has a minimum alcohol percentage of 30%. So that's just for the younger, the minimum from the IGP. Um, Oude, which is uh, a difference in recipe, and I'll come back to you on that later uh, when, um, I discuss how we produce our own out of Geneva. Um, but according to the IGP, it can only be produced in the Netherlands and Belgium. It's again produced from neutral grain alcohol and has a minimum of 15% of malt spirits. And again, it's aromatized with juniper berries and has a higher alcohol volume of 35%. So this is just, just the, the formal part of Geneva, the IGP, and uh, all the minimum you have to. Um, it means, Antoine, that if the same thing was done in any other place for the younger than Netherlands, Belgium, and north of France, it could not be called a younger Geneva, correct? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's true. And um, I'm, I'm not sure if, if they do, so um, to be honest. So, um, that's why I was hesitating, so I don't know if other people are really, are at this moment producing it, I don't know. Okay. Um, any other questions? Because this is a bit tricky part sometimes, and people 
have questions. I know we said we we're going to go to the end, but right. So, how do we compose our Geneva? Or produce our blend, actually. And um, for us, it's very, very important to make clear that Geneva is a blend, and it's not just a alcohol with juniper berry flavor in it. It's a blend, and it's a blend of at least two different types of grain alcohol, which we said neutral grain spirits and malt spirits. But uh, also what we do, uh, we add another malt spirit called corn spirit. Um, because, uh, and then we'll, I'll, go, uh, I'll go through how we produce the different types of alcohol to explain what it does to the base blend if you blend it like this. So, uh, grain alcohol is the, well, gives the less taste to, uh, to the blend. It's uh, very neutral. It's mash is made only with wheat and uh, distillation is in rectification still. And uh, this is uh, rectified until 96.6%. So uh, it's very, very good alcohol. It's very, very well made. And, um, and I'm always surprised if you taste it, there, uh, there's a big difference between suppliers because this is what we buy. We don't produce this ourselves. We cannot do that. We cannot do to 96.6%, we cannot, that's the truth. So uh, we buy this, and, uh, but it's very, very good alcohol, uh, very pure and lightly grainy and crisp in alcohol. That's right. So the more interesting alcohol is the malt spirits we produce. And it's a mash of wheat and barley, and it's distilled in a pot still. You can see it here in the middle. Uh, it's a uh, pot still. Uh, we distill it twice to 47%. And uh, you get a, well, you get a very, very rich flavor from it. And uh, it brings a lot of character to the brand, blend also. So for us, that's very important. And uh, we put more in than 1.5%. In total, uh, you will see in our younger there will be 15% of malted spirits together with the corn spirits. This is corn spirit. So again, it's a different mash. It's wheat, barley, and rye. Uh, it's triple distilled until 72%. Because it's triple distilled, it's less malty flavor than you have with uh, the malted spirits. But the rye really gives it a distinctive character. So this is really. If you blend all these alcohols together, we really get more depth to your alcohol already. So th this is really important for us for uh, understanding Geneva. So it's not just a uh, neutral spirit with juniper berry. No, it's a blend, which we feel is very important. Uh, Chantouan, we said we would go to the end, but maybe uh, if you don't mind, we have a few questions. Maybe we can uh, share them with you because this way we can uh, you know, address them as we go. Uh, there are a couple of questions uh, about the, the base you were talking about. The first one is when you say grain alcohol is only wheat, do you mean that as a category for Geneva, it's 100, always 100% 100 wheat or that Boomsma grain alcohol is 100% wheat? And the second question is uh, to confirm, you said your younger is 15% malt spirit and is a wheat malted in malted spirit? That's another thing. Wait, first, the first question. The first question is uh, about the neutral grain spirits. If you're producing grain Geneva, as we call it, you have to use grain alcohol made from grain. You can also make another type of Geneva called young Geneva but without the grain. And then you can use uh, also um, beet, beet uh, sugar beets. Uh, alcohol, but that's something we don't use because we want the wheat, we want flavor, and we want a better alcohol. So that's that's. I think that was the first question, and the second question that was about the malt content, was it? Yes. And most of the time we get uh, how much is the percentage of malted spirits in your Geneva? So in here, but uh, with us, we if you we 
count the corn and the malt spirits, together we are at 15%. Okay, thank you, Jean Antoine. Any other questions? As we're there. I presume that's enough. I think we're good. But we're going to the production. And um, this is not very, well, it's not very uh, crafty like, probably, but it's, uh, it's the truth. It's, we have two pot stills which are very, very uh, highly, uh, well, uh, um, automated and really state of the art. We can measure everything. And um, so that's why we put this in so we can show you that we measure everything also, and that's, which is very, very important for the quality. And um, so that's why uh, I put this slide in. And it gives us also very much flexibility uh, as automation does. Um, this is just for the production, uh, just to give you a small overview of what we all, what we have. Uh, so to the, to the left, I think it's also to your left, um, you have the small copper pot still. And, um, Which we will see when we do the tour at the end, right? Yes, you will see them again. So. Uh, that's true. So I won't be too long. Then in the middle you have the, the, the 2,500 liter pot still and also with uh, the rectification uh, column on it. So uh, this is where we produce it. So I have a little film. This is actually uh, the, this is the filling of the, the kettle, the pot still, sorry. And here we start with uh, distillation. And what you could see there is that we, we, mix, we stir our liquid, which is very interesting because it's not very known that a lot of, don't, not a lot of distilleries do it. So we, we do it. And this is where we can control the quality, taste-wise, and this is where we can So this is the overview. This is also what we're going to see later on. Uh, but then it will, will not be in production because we don't work at night. So after we've produced all the ingredients, uh, the young and the old Geneva, are, obviously they have to be blended and then uh, we store them and we let them marry. And that's very, very important uh, for around two weeks. Uh, that's uh, a lot of time people forget that you have to let them marry together before you get a good drink. Um, then you have production. We, well, this is a strange picture perhaps, but um, it shows we have our own bottling line, uh, which we are very proud of to have our own bottling line. So we are very, very flexible and we can make our own production and which is a, uh, for us, it's very important that we are flexible. Jean-Antoine, there is a question that is coming back from a little bit earlier. Is a wheat uh, malted that you use? No. Okay, thank no. you, Jean-Antoine. So uh, then we come to the question, how do we make our own young Geneva? Which is interesting, obviously you want to, and, um, as we've seen, seen uh, as I told before, it's a blend, and it's a blend of grain alcohol, malt spirits, and corn spirits. Well, hopefully you understand a little bit now where it comes from. And then obviously we have to add juniper berry. And uh, we use juniper berry extract, which we add. And then we also add a small touch of lime and mandarin distillates for the freshness. So again, it will give you uh, a different finish than you're probably used to. And uh, obviously we put them in, together in our family secret uh, formula. And then you get a nice crisp and elegant Geneva uh, with juniper berries and a hint of citrus. So, and we're going to taste that later on. Then, um, powder. Aude is, uh, uh, here we have to explain a little bit more also between the younger and the Aude. Younger 
Older means young, unaged. Older means out, old, aged. And um, to a lot of people, they think it refers to the aging, but it's actually not. From uh, the law, it's actually, uh, it refers to the way you use uh, the difference uh, between the malted spirits and the neutral grain alcohol. And if you have at least 15% of the malted spirits in there, you can call it out. And to make it even worse, actually, you can also um, color it with caramel. So that's pretty confusing. So that's why my grandfather, Anton Bomsma, said, look, old has to be old. People don't understand. So, and therefore, our old Geneva is aged in small oak casks. So we, our old Geneva is really old. So, and we, yes, we also use at more of the malted spirits. We use at least 30%. So this is really, really going to the whiskey side, but you're going to taste it later on. Um, so Chantoine, what you are saying is if we just look at the IGP itself, uh, yes. we could find an Eau de Geneva, which yes. on the country of Boomsma would not have been aged at all. Yes, that's okay. correct. Okay, so it's a specificity to Boomsma versus just the regulation. Where's the regulation? Yes. Uh, okay. I'd say other competitors do it also. They also age. So, um, but uh, regulation states that it has not to be aged at all. Okay, but even if, if it, even if it doesn't have to be aged, is it fair to say that the majority of, G, of Uda Genevers that we would find, let's say, in the US would have been aged in barrels? Yes, I think they are all aged in barrels, yes. Okay, yeah. okay. Yeah. Thank you, Chantoine. Yeah. So, oh, that's a, that's a shock. That's the new packaging. So uh, hopefully in July, we will come over with the new packaging. And uh, here you can see, uh, this is the packaging we also use for our gin. And um, we want to tell the story, actually what we're telling you, uh, we want to tell the story with the bottles also. So we started with Geneva, and then Geneva you go to gin, and then um, this is the this is a gin bottle. And uh, so we can tell very naturally the, the whole story. So at least that's what we hope. Right. I'm sorry. I have to put in my phone. So Chantoine, when, when we hear sometimes, you know, uh, that, uh, you know, Geneva from um, the Netherlands would be the uh, grandfather of Jean or the ancestor of Jean, um, what is your uh, analysis, what is your take on this statement? Well, we are the grandfather of Jean, that's the truth. And, um, but the English, they made, uh, Gin out of it. They, well, they simplified the recipe to be honest. And um, but what I was reading about is that they had to distill it once again uh, for the legislation. So um, and that's why they have they are using less pungent alcohols. But that's something uh, I'm not completely 100 percent sure about the, the regulation. So that's the only thing I know. But we are definitely are the, the grandfather of gin because obviously. Uh, 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 our king brought it there. So, yeah. Okay. So, uh, is this a, a last slide before we go to the distillery, Chantoine? Yes. Yes. Okay. So, maybe what I propose is if you can end the sharing of your screen, because yeah. this way you will become the, uh, your phone will become the main, uh, we want your phone to become the main. Uh, tracker for us and then we can follow you and have a full view of the distillery okay i will um so i'll um, i'll put you on the other side so you can see where i'm going perfect much more interesting there you go
So these are the offices, which is well, they're brand new, but um, not used because we have uh, Corona. So these are the offices. And over there is our production facility. There are, uh, are stills. And we, this is pretty new. And it's uh, it's a bit windy here. So, so what, is the, what is the difference? Because in Houston we are pretty comfortable with temperature. What is your current temperature tonight? Because it's like it's nine, it's seven thirty-four p.m. Right in the Warden. Yes, uh, it's uh, around nine degrees now. Ah, uh, Celsius. Yes. Okay, yeah, I understand why you were called earlier. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. So, um, here we enter. Um, this is what we call uh, our uh, assembly room. So, um, here you see four tanks where we assemble uh, the, the Geneva, as I told. We assemble the neutral grain, alcohol, water, um, corn spirits, malt spirits, and then obviously the essences and the oils. And then we mix it here in together and then we let them marry for two weeks. So here you have all the ingredients. Uh, this is our beer and burger vessel where we can extract all the herbs we need for our herbal bitters. It's like making tea, and uh, you have a big, well, uh, herbal tea bag inside, and uh, this is where we can make it. Here we keep some of our herbals, and actually, they, as lo the longer you keep them, uh, the nicer they become. And uh, some of the herbs we so use. So, what are some here. of the herbs we are seeing, uh, Chantoine? So here is an, um, Egyptian anise, bay leaf. Orange apple, uh, licorice root, uh, um, ooh, fully. Uh, that's that's around. That's a flower. Um, juniper berries and um, uh, that's the, oh, I forgot the English name. Sorry. So you can see we're distilling quite a lot of uh, herbs at the moment. This is really cool. So once we've produced it, we store them here. So uh, also for the herbal bitters, we have different, uh, and this is a, for example, for the Boomsma Beer and Burger, and it's called a, a concentrate. So we do different batches with, with each other. So we have a, try to get some homogeneity in the blend. Um, but also we store our old Genevers here. for one and five here. And then we have a three-year-old pork phoenix and also a five-year-old uh, berm aged. So this is what we built recently and also where we put in the, the sills. The, this one is 2,500 liters. So, and the nice part is you can do pot still and it's uh, heated with uh, steam and the steam generator is behind that door. And uh, so you can produce anything in here, malt spirits, corn spirits, we make our own whiskey, we have, uh, we have a vodka, we really still have vodka in here called Esbjerg uh, Copper Vodka. Uh, for the vodka we use the rectifying column. And well, each plate can be uh, seen as a distillation. So each, the more plates you close or open, uh, it's not just how you want to say it, uh, the purer the alcohol you get. We can get it around to 80% of alcohol. So then uh, alcohol comes through here. This is our tasting glass. This is my favorite part because here I can taste what comes out and see if it's good. And if it's good, 
we uh, we can get it here into these tanks. Okay, uh, Antoine, we we have a question um, because you went through some barrels uh, earlier. Uh, can you confirm the type of wood you are using and if it is new or used barrels, please? Uh, it's all used barrels for uh, the one and the five, and they're all ex uh, whiskey, Scotch whiskey casks, so all ex bourbon, so uh, American oak. And then obviously for port, it's uh, uh, port for, uh, is from uh, Portugal, and we have also some from uh, France uh, from my bar for the Bordeaux uh, finish uh, aging. Okay. So, and I also saw coming uh, uh, how many plates there are eight plates. And that's the condensator, condensator sorry. Then we have also have um, a small. So this is the, this one is 500 liters. And this is what we may really use to make for herbals and because it's easier to clean. And um, so we, for example, we use this for our Boomsma Gin. Uh, we make concentrate with for the Boomsma Gin. And uh, we only use this one. We don't use the, um, the rectifying still. With this one, you can also make extracts with, because uh, here, if you can see it, there's a little vessel and you can put herbs inside there. And then uh, you can let the vapor go over, which is fantastic because you don't have to have the herbs inside your vessel or in your still. So here you can see we already, we're preparing a batch of uh, gin. What we do is uh, the gin we, let's see if I can open it. Come on, Chantoine, you can. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they, will, they won't be happy with me. So, there you go. Oh, wow. If, if you could only taste it or smell it, fantastic. So here you can see, uh, you can see the different herbs uh, we use in, in our gin. Uh, so and uh, this cardamom, juniper, a lot of juniper berry, obviously, uh, lemon peel. Uh, we let them macerate for, for 20, uh, 24 hours and then we start distillating it. So and this is a. So this is how we operate the stills, the both of them. Any questions? I don't know. I think a lot of us wish we could be there and smell it with you. <laughs> yeah, even by accident, had my hands in there. That's fantastic. It's smelly. It's tasty. Mm. Really good. Love that. So this is uh, where all the production takes place. And um, we do also a lot of testing also in, a, in lab. Uh, so a lot of product development also. And uh, so here are a lot of herbs which are being, which we use for tests. A lot of herbs here also we use actually for production. Uh, so what are those? Uh, what are those in the in the bonbon uh, glass uh, bonbon uh, champagne? Uh, can, uh, all types of um, herbs. And uh, normally, I would say, look, uh, you want to smell, but that makes it a bit difficult at the moment. But um, chamomile, uh, you have kennel, uh, uh, um, uh, you have uh, mint. Uh, a lot of different herbs we use actually also in the cluster bitter right here. And that's the, that's the uh, laboratory, which they close. But I know. So here you can see we do a lot of uh, product development. This is actually for our new, uh, this is uh, for our coffee liqueur we're making. 
which is very cool because it's uh, based on cold brew, which is nice. Uh, so you can see we do a lot of uh, product development. It's a bit of a mess because we're very, very busy at the moment. And also we do uh, all this, the, the tasting and sampling, but also measure how much alcohol is in here. So we have an alcohol densimeter, we have uh, bricks, we have a pH. We can distillate also here. So we do a lot for the quality. Thank you so much. This is great to be able to take that tour. Sorry? It's great to be able to take that tour with you and just walk around with you. Well, it's nice. It's, uh, it's um, nice to, to do it. And uh, I hope, people, I hope uh, people can see it. I, I, I'm not too sure about my uh, filming skills yet. Uh, no, you're good. <laughs> okay. Wait, I have to close it because people, uh, well, people like alcohol a lot. So uh, certainly in Corona times. So we go across, and here are our bottling facilities. And uh, well, obviously they're not running now, but uh, that's good. I have a helper. That's a sixth generation, correct? Uh, yeah, it's my son. <laughs> he needs to have a haircut. So this is uh, our production facility. I'll try to get a light on. Yep. So actually at the moment where we can fill anything here from one and a half liters till O2, these small bottles, round bottles, square bottles, self-adhesive, uh, everything. So for us, that's very, very cool. And um, for, us, for us, it's good to have it. So we come back and we're back in the office. I think now the, the, the fun part starts. We're going to uh, have a taste, aren't we? Yes. That's good. Because I'm not sure if my phone will hold uh, much longer because I think the battery is low. Okay. <laughs> But I think you can see me now here. Yes, we have you back on the on the other screen. That's great. Thank you, Chantal. Yeah. So uh, and uh, I think uh, I think we can start the tasting. Uh, if that's okay with you. Yes, we are ready. Okay. Well, first we'll uh, start with uh, the younger. And uh, wait, oh. I'll just get a picture for you of the younger. So, the younger, uh, this is how you see it normally in the, in the bars and the shops. And I think you have a smaller version. And um, I would like to invite you to, to pour yourself a little bit of the younger in a glass and then see, uh, just swirl around, take a swift nose. And then I am very curious to hear any reactions, obviously, because I know how it tastes, but, um, it should be very light, um, it's elegant, you have, obviously you should have the juniper berries in there, but also uh, the citrus coming through, which gives it a little bit of freshness and a mandarin. And um, hopefully uh, it's, it's, um, it's lighter than you're probably used to when you drink gin, um, because we, we used to drink this always neat. 
uh, and uh, we the, traditionally Geneva is drank um, with uh, just before uh, dinner uh, we drink one or sometimes two two shots of uh, Geneva young Geneva chilled from the refrigerator and uh, that's how it should be traditionally how it's drunk um, nowadays obviously we we try also different uh, moments uh, to use it um, as a light gin and tonic or Geneva and tonic sorry uh, are in cocktails so you also see uh, Chantoine the the Geneva a young and Oude being used more and more in a, in a cocktail because if I remember correctly when we look at books you know which are pre prohibition uh, mm -hmm. many cocktails uh, we are made uh, we are made with Dutch Geneva yes pre prohibition uh, when they're talking about gin actually they're talking about Geneva yeah um, uh, unfortunately. Uh, Yes, that, that's that's a good thing, and I think uh, in the states uh, the cocktail scene is so fantastic that you are so interested in uh, exploring new tastes and also making cocktails. Um, so yes, um, I was tra I was talking actually also a bit traditionally about how in the Netherlands uh, our Geneva is drank, and that we're trying to change that. Okay. This is a, I have to say, doing a tasting like this is, a, is the harder part because you don't see the reactions. <laughs> it's very difficult. So you can share the reaction like, like Casey uh, did uh, on the chat. Don't hesitate to. And if yeah. you have any question, uh, please uh, don't hesitate to ask them as well. Right. Yeah. But I'm, um, oh, there are the chats. Oh, sorry. Um, sorry, I'm new to that. Sorry, guys. Uh, So if everybody has uh, enjoyed the younger, we can move to the Oude. Yeah. yeah. So that's probably bottle number two then, Josh, isn't it? And Oude being... This is the Oude, Barrel Aves, that you have just seen in... Um, in the distillery, uh, here, because of the recipe, we use more malt spirits, and also uh, is aged. This one is aged for at least one year in small oak casks, all again American oak, ex Scotch whiskey barrels, and um, this is really has definitely is, has more maltiness to the palate, and is also uh, um, well, I think it, it's it's softer, and uh, it's. This is what you can drink as also as a digestive, but it's great for mixing. It's great for uh, cocktails. Well, what are the key aromatic that you are going to pick in the Oude Chantoine yourself? Uh, I would say spices, a bit of vanilla spices. That's something for me that's typical for the Oude. And, and so sometimes, as you were mentioning uh, often, you know, the, the perception is in fact the younger and the Oude have completely different profile and they may be uh, more appealing to different type of consumer, maybe gin consumer or whiskey consumer that are just very different. Yes, I, 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 I agree. And uh, this is much more to the, to the whiskey uh, side profile. And, um, but when you compare it to whiskey, this is again, I think this is very, very, elegant and crisp and neat which is makes it perfect uh for drinking meat but also in a in a cocktail which uh and uh, um so I, I would definitely say this goes more towards uh, the whiskey yes and i see you know people get malty yeasty yeah that's correct and um licorice i've but probably That could be from the herbs. That could be, yeah. We have the first two Ginevra's and I think no, the third one is close to bitter. 
Uh, I think it's better to do the beer and burger first, to be okay, honest. Okay, so we'll go to number four and then we'll finish with number three. Yes, sorry. Yeah, I think I think that's better because the number three is very, very sweet. So will you go to this one? So this is our herbal bitter, which I actually didn't tell you yet about. Um, this is our Frisian herbal bitter and called beer and burger. And uh, it's we have 11 herbs in there and uh, it's still to make according to our traditional family recipe uh, we have 11 herbs we had to macerate for two months in a mix of um, grain alcohol and malt spirits and then after two months uh, oh, sorry, it's at 35 percent then after two months uh, we put them in the big tanks we leave them there and we reduce to 30 percent to make gin um, Bear Murder out here. This is very different. This is probably a product which you don't know. Uh, it's pretty unique. Uh, I know on the US market. Uh, and if I would compare it to something, I would compare it to a light amaro or a, a very, well, it's a very light bitter. It has only 60% proof or 30% alcohol. And um, again, you can drink this neat if you chill it uh, from the fridge. Or as a digestive, works very, very well as digestive on room temperature. You remember last time you were in the U.S. in a few uh, cities we visited, uh, we got a few Negronis. Uh, made uh. with uh, beer and burger. And I mean, personally, I like Negronis and they were really uh, amazing. Yes, thank you. No, I, I completely agree. Uh, a Negroni with a beer and burger is fantastic. And, uh, and yeah, um, I... Difficult to explain how it works, but it works fantastic and it is very good. Um, but uh, personally, I also uh, like to drink it neat uh, after dinner. It's uh, really good. Very good digestive, um, but very different from what you have uh, in the States at the moment, uh, but very interesting. So it would be great to see uh, uh, people what you think about it also. Um, if you have any ideas of cocktails with it. Uh, obviously we have the Negroni, but I think there are some more possibilities to make with them and we're always open to get good ideas. Ah. I know that one. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. So last is going to be the cluster bitter, Chantoine. Yes. This one, cluster bitter. And um, again, it's a, it's a, we call it a herbal bitter, but it uh, has sugar. So it's, uh, it's actually, it's more liqueur. And uh, it's an old recipe. And um, it's a, actually a monastery recipe. Uh, cluster meaning monastery. So it's a monastery uh, liqueur from the Netherlands or from Friesland where I'm from and um, we use 17 different herbs in there um, mainly green herbs and um, so you have in there uh, nettle, daisy, dandelion mint, uh, clover angelica, anise, gentian uh, nettle, death nettle well, and uh, some others um, which makes it very interesting uh, the only thing which is not natural is the color, so I have to, uh, uh, unfortunately, but uh, we cannot get a natural color uh, with, uh, with only the herbs. Um, this is at 40%, 80 proof, and uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a unique drink. Um, it has nice tones of anise, uh, mint, uh, Really nice uh, mouthfeel. So for, again, if you chill it straight from the fridge, it's fantastic, a fantastic drink. Um, but also in cocktails, uh, you can use it anywhere where you use uh, chartreuse. Or, uh, and so in a last word, for example, it's fantastic. That's actually a really good point about the chartreuse that you mentioned, uh, Chantal. It's Josh. Uh, yeah, hi, Josh. Um, 
because that's something that we've been having a lot of success with, with a lot of bars that we've been bringing it into and showing it off is that it has a very similar flavor profile. Um, it's a little bit more viscous, um, yeah. but it definitely is uh, something that's appealing um, because it kind of open, broadens, uh, broadens a feel where there's only one product in that line, you know? No, I, um, yeah, thank you. So I think everybody has had the chance uh, to be uh, to test all four of them. Uh, yes, you're right. I mean, those are both part of the monks' uh, heritage. And as you all know, the monks were very, have been very influential since uh, the sixth, seventh century and through all of the Middle Ages uh, yes. for both spirits and wine. And we owe a lot of the liqueurs, even that we know today, the recipes uh, in France, but you know, in the Netherlands as well, in Friesland, we are developed by monks, and it is their heritage that we are still, you know, duplicating and living on today. <laughs> yeah, well, the, uh, even the juniper berries, uh, like the Geneva, it all started with the monks, so they started with all the, the good things. Agreed. Uh, there is a question is, was there something specific about the monks? uh that you know that that show the recipe for the close to bitter no or we just answered it okay cool thank you i just want to make sure we didn't miss on a question <laughs> no no thank you very much no no just uh, not, not specific no so do do we have any further question on the production of geneva i mean i i think to me but to many people it's not the easiest process to uh, to master and to understand it's it's very uh, specific and I, I think fascinating uh, mm. as well as the two bitters do we have any question uh, left that uh, Shankman could try to answer for you just while everybody's looking while they're typing or anything like that one I was curious when did you when did y'all build your own bottling line um, how long have y'all had that well uh, long it's a long time we re renew every couple of years we renew something uh, like this year we renewed the palletizer uh, that was already 25 years old oh, wow. um, we have uh, still the filling machine is 35 year old but we're not going to uh, it's one of the best they have ever built so we're we're keeping that one <laughs> and uh, so we're changing uh, every now and then we we're now we're going to uh, change some labeling station uh, we have to, you have to keep investing to to keep it running um, but my uh, it was my father Anton Bomsma who started here in Leeuwarden who or here sorry on the on this place where we are now we're not in the center anymore we're on outskirts of uh, Leeuwarden and he started really with uh, the, the the bottling lines we are we are seeing today actually yeah he built this okay thank you I appreciate that um, did anybody have any further questions other than the ones that we've addressed in the chat? Uh, this doesn't popped up while you were talking. I'm going to assume that that, that is a, that's a no. <laughs> um, is there anything else that you wanted to add, Shanton? Anything you wanted to mention or kind of go over or you kind of hit all the nails on the head? Well, well I, I hope so, to be honest. Um, um, this was my first time and uh, we are... Um, uh, I hope you enjoyed it and I want to thank you all for joining us and uh, listening to my story and hopefully uh, when all this is over the corona time I can come over and see you in person talk about the products and taste together because that's I feel that's that's yeah I feel it better but um for now I think this is very very good and uh, so thank you very much for uh, for paying attention thank you very much uh, there's one one question I got put in what is the US point um Ed asked that one um the U.S. point. Uh, can, can uh, well, yeah, thank you. Yeah, because I, I don't. Yeah, I'm on the same page. Uh, Ed, would you mind clarifying your question, please? And thank you uh, as well. Uh, thank you, uh, Joshua, for uh, organizing all of these. Uh, you know, with a team at the USBG in Houston, for each and every one of you to take the time. Uh, to share the story of, of Shantuan, of his family, of Boomsma. Uh, we are extremely appreciative. So thank you, Joshua. Thank you to the USBG yes. and thank you to each and every one of you. We are very appreciative and 
Chantal, I think it was super cool. It's around 8 p.m. It is 8 p.m. in the water. But to yeah. have you going through the distillery and seeing it, uh, it, it I, I thought it was fascinating. So thank you so much to all of you. Okay, no, thank you. Thank you very much for me. It's a great, great pleasure to do something uh, different than sitting yeah. uh, in your... <laughs> it's for, for me, it's fantastic. So thank you very much, all. Thank you very much. Oh, uh, Ed asked about the pricing. That's what it was. Um, ah, US price point. Uh, oh. uh, the, we're looking at, for retail, you're looking at about $25 a piece on the Genevieve's. And it's pretty, it's 25 across the board, I think, on all the bottles uh, when I went into specs just uh, the other day. So that's for the retail. So you will have a, a wholesale price slightly lower than those, uh, obviously, retail price point. Yeah. Yeah, you're probably looking around like $18 or so. Cool. Joshua, thank you. Chantoine, thank you. Thank you thank all. You. Thank you very much, all. Thank you very much. And uh, stay safe, all. Have a good day. Thank you, everybody. Have a great day. Be safe. Thank you, everybody.